Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie, and today I'm going to share with you guys some of our very favorite fall books. Hey guys, I'm Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a bunch of books that we are putting in our fall book basket. All right guys, welcome back. I am Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie, and I am so excited that you guys are here. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. This is a very, very exciting video for us because um, we are collaborating in this video with another family. Um, Christy Hawkins over at Gracefield is the YouTube channel, and Gracefield Homeschool is where you can find her on um, Instagram, she also has a very similar lifestyle to us, does lots of wonderful videos and shares all the things, even uses the same curriculum as us. And she is a very good friend who wanted to collaborate on this video to share our um, fall book baskets that we are using in our own home. So I am excited to um, join with her and share with you guys what we're doing. And if you haven't already had a chance, the link to her channel is in the description of this video and you can go over there and check out what they're using in their home. If you are from her channel and you are visiting me, I am so excited you're here. Please subscribe because you don't wanna miss anything at all. Um, I did do a book outlet order on fall books already. So if you haven't watched that, you can go back a few videos and find that and find all the goodies that I purchased on book outlet that were fall related. And I'm not gonna repeat those same books here. So if you wanna see those, you gotta go check out that other video. But I, am, I will share with you some new ones and some that I shared in a video I did last year. So there'll be a little bit of overlap from the ones last year. If you haven't um, caught that video, you can just catch them here. But um, also I do wanna give you guys a real quick heads up. We are a Christian homeschool um, homestead family. I have six kids, one more on the way. And because we have one more baby coming at the end of this year, um, number seven, we are excited to do a baby week. So the end of October, please look for it. I am going to be doing a full week with a new video every day that week, um, sharing with you guys all of the things about babies, um, what we're buying, what we're not buying, what we regretted buying over the years, what our favorite things are, just all of the things. So I hope that you guys will continue to um, check back so that you can catch that as well. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, guys, I am going to start off with this beautiful um, board book that is perfect for little hands. If you don't already know, my kiddos are between the ages of three. I have twins that are three, um, all the way up to 10. And this is perfect for those little hands, the little three-year-old toddlers that I have. It's a pumpkin prayer, so you're getting in not only fall, but also some godly values at the same time, which I am excited about. And it's just a really sweet book. Um, love this one for like a quiet moment um, or like right before bed. It doesn't take long to go through, but it still makes a big impact for the kids. So there's that one, A Pumpkin Prayer. We've actually had that one since my oldest was like a toddler. So it's been a while. Okay, I am going to share with you guys my very, um, two of my very favorite books for fall. Um, these are by Elsa Besco. I love her books. I cannot find, I haven't found one yet that I do not love. She has tons of books. They're just so, um, magical and, um, childlike. I just love them so much. And so I have been slowly collecting them because a long time ago we had a library where we could check these out, but where we live now, this library does not have them. I'm okay with that because as long as I have them in my possession, that means that I can actually keep them and read them to my children as many times as I want. And we can even um, share them with our grandkids as they get older. I have a cat here that's trying to be on the video too. <laughs> so, um, okay, the first one is Woody Hazel and Little Pip. 
love 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 these look at this look at these illustrations these characters they are so cute if you saw my home library tour video um i showed you some of these books that we love and um there's a couple of them in that video also i just love the illustrations they're kind of a forest feel um we used to live in a forest before we live where we live now and it was so um magical just so beautiful and fun so wonderful the kids just they had so many adventures and it's something that um my big kids especially my two oldest but maybe even my third one they just treasured those memories so much in their hearts the second one is christopher's garden also by elsa besco and i just love these they're so cute so cute look at this boy with his crown it's kind of like a waldorf feel okay and um kind of like a waldorf um the characters are just so sweet and tender i love this so much um i seriously cannot rave enough about elsa besco she has so many cute ones for every season hat cottage is another good one for summer um uh the sun egg is a great one uh the blueberry one is a great one children of the forest is my absolute favorite um they're just so beautiful so definitely adding those those are the ones that i like by elsa besco for fall okay this one is one that has such a um great moral which you do not see so often it seems in today's literature especially for children it's a bunch of what charlotte mason used to call twaddle a lot of just kind of stuff to waste their time really but this one like i remember when i was a kid i remember the teacher saying and the moral of the story is and then we were expected to fill in the blank and that doesn't happen today because the books just don't have morals they're just they're just nonsense really so this one does and i love it so much it's the orange shoes we happened to pawn this one day just on a random library pick and i have loved it ever since so we have purchased our own copy and it's beautiful but it's about this little girl who doesn't have um they live a very modest lifestyle they don't have a lot of money and she gets some new shoes she's kind of teased at school because she doesn't have nice things and she gets some new shoes and the other kids make fun of her and they destroy her her brand new shoes look they're even a big family which i of course because we're a big family i i love that so she gets these new shoes the other kids um trash them and she ends up getting upset but then she turns them into something more beautiful and um it ends up being having this beautiful lesson at the end of forgiveness and um being proud of what you have taking what you have and um turning it into something better those kinds of values so i love that especially this time of year because it seems like and you'll see this with a lot of the books i picked out um it seems like the kids get so bombarded with stores and um, advertisements and different things telling them all the things that they're supposed to need to have right and they just don't need all those things they don't need the latest greatest things right and it's hard for kids to discern that and to separate that from real life and so i love having all of these books and we constantly read them to our kids because i really want them to have a disconnect from what the world tells them and then what god tells us so the next one i have is full belly bowl also it was a random library find that we had to add to our collection because it had such a great moral so this one there's this little old man he um does like a good deed and the the woman or whatever she gives him a magical bowl and the bowl is so exciting for him at first because anything he puts in it it multiplies so then he starts having money many things and he puts all the things in that he thinks he wants to multiply but then bad things happen of course as we all know and so um it's kind of like that be careful what you wish for so i love it it is such a good book about just 
being happy with what you have and not wanting um, more than what you need. So love those values. Okay, this one is a Gail Gibbons book. I love Gail Gibbons books. If you're not familiar with this author, it is a great one to look into because the Gail Gibbons books always, um, they're always educational and they always have a different theme. So this one is the pumpkin one. Somewhere along the way I have the apple one. I just didn't find it for this video for you. But there is pretty much the fill in the blank book and there's all the different topics. So you can find all different ones. And then it goes through everything you would ever want to know about that topic, but at a child's level. So this one is pumpkins. It starts off telling us all the names of the different kinds of pumpkins, um, the way pumpkins are grown, their life cycle, how the seeds work, how they are harvested, um, just, what you can do with pumpkins, what people do. They have, uh, you know, contests, they make pies, the history of Thanksgiving is thrown in, just all the things, guys, seriously. And so I do really, really, really like that. It talks a little bit about Halloween, carving pumpkins, just all the things. Love the pumpkin book, love Gail Gibbons books, so that's a good one to have on your shelf too. Okay, this time of year, we always try to read at least once a book about Johnny Appleseed. Whether or not we're studying American history, I try to throw one in. And this is one that I have a couple different ones, but this one I really like is um, the illustrations on this one. It's by uh, Stephen Kellogg. I just love how cute it is. It's it's so child friendly and just adorable. Look at look at this. If you have boys, how do they not love this? Right. I have some of those boys, those just really manly men who are into that. So this is really fun, but it's just so cute. The it, pictures are great. The whole thing. Look at this little like nightcap on this grandma who's telling this story. It's so sweet. So sweet. So Johnny Appleseed in any of any form is a great lesson, but especially this time of year, but I just particularly like this one. Okay. Always love Little House love them so much and when we were starting out with Little House um, my oldest was in preschool and I didn't know I want I knew I wanted to teach her about Little House and that lifestyle and all of the things but we started out with the picture book versions and I, ha I do not have all of them but I have a lot of them and this is the one I like for fall it is County Fair and it's actually about Farmer Boy which is Almanzo um, kind of his his story, I guess, which if you don't already know, um, later grows up and marries Laura and they have a family anyway. So this is kind of his story when he's a little boy. And this is just about the fair. It's a great book. If you're going to a county fair, if you're going to a fair in your town or your area, whatever, it's just so cute. But I also love, of course, this time period, just kind of that simpler, easier farm life time period. That's kind of the lifestyle we live in our own home. We have a farm and um, it's just, it's so fitting and perfect for this time of year, but also for our personal family. Okay, this one is brand new. I'm adding it this year and I am so glad that I am. I actually um, just purchased it used and off of thrift books if you haven't used thrift books um there's a link below where you can find it and order things of your own but i find the best deals there and also book outlets so i'm just going to throw that in there um if you haven't already checked out my book outlet videos the link is below um to go check them out but um this one you can see i has even a little sticker here from goodwill i got it off thrift books but it is mommy why don't we celebrate Halloween? This can be controversial because we are Christians and we don't celebrate Halloween, but lots of Christians do. So I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying what we do in our home. And um, it's a great way to explain to your kids why you're not wanting to partake. And it's also a great resource for parents who are feeling conflicted about Halloween, especially with the way the world um, has put a focus on it and made it such a 
um, such a, almost like a worshiping idol. Um, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, but it's such a focus and people are so into it and they want to, um, scare each other and they want to scare their children and they want to scare other people's children. And just the whole thing is just terrible. And, um, you know, Jesus says, be a light. How can you be a light if you're running around being a dark, dark thing, you know? So, um, anyway, if, if whether or not you celebrate Halloween in your own home is your thing, but if you're wondering why some families don't, this is a great resource for you to check into. Um, it kind of gives you that history of, um, how it began and what it really stands for. And it's not what you think. It's not just about dressing up and um, getting candy. Like all of those things, just like with Christmas, have um, are symbols to represent other things. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, it's just a fun holiday for our kids to have fun and dress up. What's wrong with dressing up in candy? And I understand that because we were the same way. We used to have all of our kids um, would dress up in cute little costumes and we would take them around trick-or-treating and we did all the things. But um, then we learned more. And when you know better, you do better. So we have kind of evolved as a family. I grew up celebrating Halloween. I am not an evil person. Um, no wrong came to me because of it. But um, also, I don't feel that it was the best thing for my heart. And that's what we want to reach with our own children. So that is why we are adding this one to our collection. Our kids already don't really like Halloween. We um, go to great lengths to kind of um, protect them from certain things. We don't watch the scary movies. We don't, um, like we even go in a different door at the store that doesn't have the scary blow up monster, you know what I'm talking about, um, on display for them to ogle at or whatever but um we just take precautions like you would um when protecting your children from any other thing that is not appropriate for children or is inherently evil like um drugs or prostitution or whatever you would just take precautions you wouldn't just parade it in front of your children so that is kind of what we do as well um I know this is a controversial subject and a lot of people are probably going to send me all kinds of hate mail and that's okay because we were that, we thought that way too. But for our own home, we are adding this one to our um, fallback skit and I am so excited to share it with the kids. They already, like I said, they already are on board. They already tell me, oh, that's scary. I don't want to go down that road. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. So I know it's not, they know it, they feel it, and they know that Satan wants them. Satan wants your kids, I'm just saying. So um, anyway, so that's kind of my little soapbox about Halloween. I didn't mean to go on a soapbox about it, but that's kind of my soapbox about Halloween. And um, yeah, so our, actually I should add this in. Our church started doing like a, like a trunk or treat. And I was really conflicted about that because they started that last year and I was really conflicted about it because I didn't know if we should participate, if I wanted to participate, if I wanted to partake in all of that. But it almost was, we ended up participating. We did a very obvious fall theme and it ended up being a um, kind of a way to reach others in the community and which is what the goal of the church was. And um, you know, Jesus, he would go to those people who, um, were not like him, who were not Christians and things, and he would go to them and help them meeting them kind of at where they were. Right. But then he didn't leave them where they were. He would carry them to where he was so that they could be better. So, um, I kind of feel like that's where we stand on it. Um, I don't mind, um, I guess it's still a little confliction, I guess, but it's more of a, um, like a way to reach the community because if nobody knows, how will they know if you don't tell them? So there you go. Okay. Enough about Halloween, right? Let's talk about the Bernstein bears. Um, love the Bernstein bears, particularly love the ones by living that have the living lights logo, but these three I'm going to show you do not have the Living Lights logo. These are like the old classics. 
and they're still really good. Again, with the morals, get the gimmies. That's kind of, um, you know, like what I was talking about. This time of year, the kids are bombarded with things and giving them these kind of resources helps them to sort through those feelings and what's right and what's wrong. The green eyed monster, this one's talking about greed. Um, so we'll be adding that one. And to top it off, think of those in need. This is actually a brand new one. It is a classic one, but it is brand new to our home this year. Amazon did that buy two, get one free. These books are like $3.99 on Amazon. So for you know that price, I'm not, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and get buy two and get one free. Why not? So anyway, think of those in need things we want them to do, right? Okay, every year, we since my kids were little, I used to have a home daycare, and ever since they were a little bitty, um, we have read Stone Soup, and we would make it like um, interactive. I would have the kids bring something from home, and we would everybody would put whatever they brought um, in a big pot, and we would cook and make our lunch that day, like our soup. And if you're not familiar with this story, that's kind of this story. Um, we would read the book and basically these travelers come, they're soldiers, they come to the town and that was how it was back in the day. They would, they didn't, there weren't hotels, so they would just stay at people's houses in different villages. But when they get to the village, nobody wants to welcome them or feed them or provide them a place to stay. So they start just, oh, okay, well, nobody has food. Well, we'll just start making our own and they start making their own um, soup using a stone and everybody gets curious and then they start bringing ingredients and lo and behold there's enough for everybody by the end of the book so it's just such a great story of sharing um, what you have with others um, giving to others thinking of those in need just all of those same themes and values that I'm wanting to surround them with this time of year I also love of course the um, illustrations that are done in just those two tones when they do those two coat tone colors so anyway all right this one is brand new to our home i have not read this one yet even um but i'm going to add it to our basket because i know it's perfect for this time of year it is what if i owned everything so again um when they get the gimmies when they're wanting all the things and on the back here it's really cute it says um uh revealing the dangers of greed the fun of sharing and the joy of being content with what God has given us. So that is exactly what we want to teach our kids. So I'm going to add this one mostly for my big girls um, and my probably my oldest three or four, but because um, they they'll the others won't comprehend this lesson, but it'll be a good one. I think I'm excited to add it to our home. Okay. Let's get into some Thanksgiving books. I know Thanksgiving is still like two months away, but I am already getting them because with all these books on my stack, I have a whole bunch of books to read. And so we might as well get those ones out too because they are full. Um, the first one is Thanksgiving Wish. Again, I have not read this one. It is brand new to our home this year. I found this at a library book sale, but it just looks so precious. It looks like it is exactly the kind of living book that is perfect and that I want in our home. Um, it's a little bit longer book, but look at these illustrations. So traditional, so classic, so sweet. They obviously focus on family. Um, there's just such a sweet sweetness about just flipping through this book. So. I am excited to add it. I don't know what it's going to really be about or what to expect from it, but I do think it's going to be a wonderful addition to our home. So I am excited about it. I will uh, have to get back to you. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm excited about it. It's Thanksgiving Wish. It's by, um, let me see if I can give you an author, Michael J. Rosen. So. Oh, there you go if you want to add it to yours all right let's talk about some of those bernstein bears books that are the living lights love those living lights books you can identify them because they always have that right there at the corner and they are the ones by bernstein bears that are christian faith-based okay so these are the ones that you are going to want if um to add like they're very obvious too like here they're praying they're giving thanks it talks a lot about 
um, the story of why we celebrate Thanksgiving, which is so important, but also brings back God to the center. So I love that. And this one is Thanksgiving Blessings. Again, very obviously a faith-based book where it says blessings, um, just talks about um, those pilgrims gave us the freedom to have faith and worship God in whatever way we think is right. Just some good, good background that honestly is not taught in today's schools. Like that is not what they, I had no idea when we studied American history recently, um, I guess recently, I guess it was like three years ago. Wow. In our homeschool, I had no idea how much um, Thanksgiving centered around God. So, I mean, because I went to public school, I didn't know. They never taught us that. So, um, I'm just so excited. I have learned so much, but more than that, my kids have learned so much. So it is exciting to add those to our collection and to keep them in the rotation every single year. Okay. This book is such a beautiful book. I love this book so much. Um, thanks for Thanksgiving. It's one of the very first Thanksgiving books I ever bought for my children. And um, when I was preparing for this video, I realized that this book at the very back has a special place where you can write in the year and the, what your children were thankful for. Unfortunately, we forgot about it. And I only did it for three years and it only has half of my children listed. So I need to get back on this. Um, I do have what they were thankful for those years. We did it in a different way, like on a piece of paper. So I'm probably going to have to go back and like record it again, but, um, for the previous years, but I definitely want to keep up with this. It's so beautiful, but this book in general is just a beautiful book. Um, what I love about this book is this mama is so normal and the pictures are just beautiful. Look at this. This mama just wants to take a minute and have a second by herself. And of course the kids are tearing up the house and each doing their own thing and everybody's happy and the house is full of love, okay? It's just like a normal family. I love it so much. Um, it's just so cute. It's so sweet and cute. The pictures, like I said, are just so gorgeous. Um, here the kids are dressing up in the attic. They're thankful. Like this is my dream home. Like seriously, this is like my dream house with a big attic where the kids could play with trunks of dress up clothes and old cool things. That is like amazing to me. In my little heart, that's, that's what I think is amazing. So my kids have a dress up trunk, but it's in my closet. So it's constantly a mess. <laughs> and this would just be such a wonderful dream, right? It's just so beautiful. And then of course, at the end, everybody gathers around and has a big, wonderful family Thanksgiving. I just, I love this book. It's so beautiful. So of course we're pulling it out again. Okay, just for fun, Squirrel's Thanksgiving. It's not really anything more than just for fun, but I do love the tender, tender pictures. Um, here's the squirrels. Aren't they cute? And they're going to church. I do love those kind of old fashioned values that so often are skipped over. Um, forgotten just the pictures themselves guys like they're just so classic it reminds me of the 80s I don't even know when this book was written but I just love it let me see okay I am so close 91 it's just so cute so I just love that kind of that feel okay guys hang in there I have two left this one is the pilgrims first Thanksgiving which I really like for um, educational purposes. It does go through each season, like winter, and shows you kind of how they were preparing and what they were doing each season. And um, of course it has them praying because Thanksgiving is all about God. Um, that was the whole point of it. But I just love it. So it's a really good one. It's a little longer, so we may do it in a couple sessions. I don't know. It just depends on their attention span. And the last one, which I am adding brand new this year. This is a brand new one. I'm so excited about this one. It is an old fashioned Thanksgiving by Louisa May Alcott. I am excited about this. Again, these illustrations, guys. Oh my gosh. Um, basically, this story is so sweet. The the mother is preparing Thanksgiving and then she has to leave to go take care of her own mother. 
um, they come, somebody comes and tells her that her mother is sick and she has to leave. And the children actually take it upon themselves. They think that the mother leaves and she's expecting that, um, like the mother and father, I think, leave. And they're expecting, oh, unfortunately, we're not going to have a Thanksgiving this year. And the children take it upon themselves to make a beautiful Thanksgiving. And of course, it's not perfect because these are children, but they have been taught how to um, use much of the kitchen supplies and tools. But of course, it's not perfect. And the parents arrive back. Everything's fine. The grandparents come. It was a big mistake. And everybody is so thankful because they can still have a beautiful, wonderful Thanksgiving, even though a couple things didn't turn out quite like they expected. I just love so much that the children did not whine, they did not complain, they just took it upon themselves to fix the problem when they saw that there was a need. And again, these are the morals I wanna teach my kids. So, I'm so, so sorry this video is so crazy long. Thank you for hanging in there though. Um, I will be adding new videos every week, sometimes two or three times a week. So go ahead and subscribe and stay updated. I will see you guys next time.